In this video, I will analyze the molecular orbital diagrams of the oxygen molecule and the fluorine molecule. The electron configuration of the oxygen atom is 1s2, 2s2, 2p4. Fluorine has one more electron. And let's look at the uh, oxygen atom first. You have two electrons in the 1s orbital, two electrons in the 2s orbital, and four electrons in the 2p orbital. And usually we can uh, neglect the uh, core electrons, but let's anyway look at this. You have two 1s atomic orbitals interacting with each other to have this 1 sigma g bonding orbital and this 1 sigma g star anti-bonding orbital. Over here you have the constructed interference and this is symmetrical with respect to the center of the molecule and over here this is uh, anti-symmetric and also we see a nodal surface in the middle uh, therefore it tells us this is a sigma star anti-bonding orbital. How about the bond order of these four electrons? You have the number of bonding electrons minus the number of anti-bonding electrons divided by two, you get zero. And actually, if you have uh, completely filled uh, subshells um, in each atom, uh, overall, uh, the number of bonding electrons will be equal to the number of anti-bonding electrons. And then, therefore, the bond order will be zero. So this is not very interesting. Now look at the core electrons. Uh, the two S electrons are core electrons. However, again, this is not very interesting because, again, you have two bonding electrons, two anti-bonding electrons. The bond order of this is actually zero. And also, we have same symmetry analysis here. Uh, if you look at this um, uh, constructed interference between the two S atomic orbitals, uh, this is a head-to-head -head interaction. Therefore, it's a sigma bond with a G symmetry. How do we determine G or U symmetry? It's very simple. You can just find the center of the molecule and then you draw an arrow passing through the center. And then if it goes from white to white, it's a G. Black to black, it's a G. Uh, if the color changes, it's going to be a U. So if you do this same thing here, it's going to be a U. So you go from here to here. You go from white to black, it's a U symmetry. So what does this G and U mean? In German, G is gerader, U is ungerader. G means even or symmetrical. U means odd or anti-symmetrical. So again, this is bonding orbital. This is anti-bonding orbital. The bond order overall is zero. Let's look at the more interesting 2P atomic orbitals. You have three 2P orbitals here, three 2P orbitals here. In total, you have six atomic orbitals. Therefore, you will make six molecular orbitals. So first, let's look at this. Usually, we define the um, molecular axis to be the z-axis. So this is the interaction between the two 2pz uh, atomic orbitals. And this is uh, constructed inference with the same phase here. There's no nodal surface in the middle. And this is head-to-head -head interaction, therefore a sigma bond. And then if you draw arrow passing through the center, you go from white to white. And then this is a G symmetry. And over here, you have a anti-bonding sigma star uh, orbital here. There's a nodal surface in the middle. This is also a head-to-head -head interaction, therefore a sigma bond. And this is a U symmetry. Look at this. If I draw an arrow, imaginary arrow from here to here passing through the center, you go from white to black. Therefore, it's a U symmetry. Now let's look at the uh, P, 2P atomic orbitals. All right, you can have uh, uh, 2PX interacting with 2PX or 2PY interacting with 2PY, and they behave similarly. So let's look at this. So what is this? Uh, this is shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder interaction. Look at this, shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder interaction. So uh, therefore, this is actually a pi bond, and this is a bonding orbital. Why is that? It's because if you look at this two lobes on top, they have the same face. If you look at this two uh, lobes on the bottom, they also have the same face. Uh, this is constructive interference. There's no nodal surfaces in the middle. Therefore, it's a bonding orbital. And then, uh, how about the symmetry? So this is very interesting here. Let's find the center of the molecule. And then we draw arrow passing through the center. You go from white to black. Therefore, it's a U symmetry. Therefore, you have one pi U bonding orbital. 
And again, you can have this one pi u in the x direction or y direction. Therefore, you have two degenerate one pi u orbitals. So this one is made of the two px orbitals. This one is made of the two py orbitals. Now, pi star. This is pi star. Why pi star? Look at these two lobes. They have the opposite faces. These two have the opposite faces. And there's a nodal surface in the middle. Therefore, this is anti-bonding uh, pi orbital with a nodal surface in the middle. How about the symmetry? It's a G-symmetry. So again, this is the center. We draw an arrow passing through the center. Look at the two ends of the arrow. You go from white to white. Therefore, it's a G-symmetry. And we have two anti-bonding pi star orbitals. Why? Because you have one made of the 2px atomic orbitals, the other from the 2py atomic orbitals. Now let's look at the bond order of this eight electrons. You have six bonding electrons. You have two anti-bonding electrons. Six minus two divided by two, you get two. So the bond order of oxygen is two. And also pay attention here. You have two electrons with the same spin. So the spin of the two electrons do not cancel. And each electron behaves like a small magnet. And therefore, this O2 molecule is paramagnetic. So if you pour uh, liquid oxygen uh, between a, um, uh, the north pole and, and south pole of a very strong magnet, this liquid oxygen can be attracted in between. All right, let's look at F2. So F2 has two more valence electrons than O2. Therefore, we are simply just uh, put one electron here, a beta electron here, and another beta electron here. Therefore, in F2, fluorine 2, all electrons are paired. And F2 is diamagnetic, without, uh, you know, uh, magnetic, uh, without uh, uh, those uh, uh, unpaired electrons. And the bond order of F2. Again, you have six bonding electrons. But for F2, you have four antibonding electrons. Remember, we have one additional beta here, another additional beta here. So you have six minus four divided by two. So the bond order of F2 is six minus four divided by two, which is just one. Now, how about ionized O2? If you have O2 plus, that means you need to take one electron away. You remove this electron. What's the bond order? It's going to be six minus one. And then divided by 2, it's 2.5. Actually, you have a strong bond order in O2 plus than uh, that in O2. And how about O2 minus? If you have O2 minus, you need to have one additional electron here or here. Okay, it doesn't matter. You're going to have 6 minus 3 divided by 2. You have a bond order of 1.5. Therefore, the bond order of O2 plus is 2.5. The bond order of O2 is 2. The bond order of O2 minus is 1.5. Similarly, the bond order of F2 plus is 1.5. The bond order of F2 is 1. The bond order of F2 minus is 0 0.5.